In this video, we're gonna take a look at the editor within Studio One 3. And the editor has two different modes, basically, when we're working with our songs. And these are actually titled differently, even. So if we're working with an audio event like this one here, this is an older song that I brought in of mine. If we were to open this in the editor, then we're using the auto audio editor. Now we have a MIDI part here as well with MIDI data, and when we're using the editor with that, it's called the music editor. So if I go ahead and select our audio event and open up, just take note of the inter interface here and kind of what you see, because when we select our MIDI part and then reopen the editor, as you can see, the controls that are available to us are gonna be uh, signif significantly different here. And so just note that there is a difference between the music editor that we're seeing here and the audio editor when we have an audio event is selected. And in this video, we're going to specifically look at working with audio and the audio editor. And this will be a relatively short video because most of the tools and functions that are available within the audio editor we've covered in previous tutorials. And as I'm going through what the, these tools are, I'll cover them briefly but I'll include a link in the upper right hand corner here. So if you'd like to learn more detailed information on that particular tool or function, then just click on that link and that will take you to a more in-depth tutorial. So let's go ahead and take a look at the audio editor and we'll start with the several different ways that you can access. Um, so if we have our audio event highlighted and I press F2, we can then access the editor that way. We can also just double click on our audio event we can also, while it's highlighted, click on the edit button down in the bottom right hand corner here. And the last method that we have is coming to view and then choosing editor. Now, once we've got this window open, know that we have a couple of controls here where we can close it down as well. We can also float this window and uh, even resize this. And if you have a second monitor, you can drag this over to that monitor and maybe even take advantage of this maximize and just make that full screen on a second monitor if we really want to be able to zoom in here and have finer control of your editing. But I'll go ahead and just restore by clicking this button there. And then in order to reattach this, we can just click that down arrow there. Now our zoom controls that are available to us within the arrange view are also available to us here. So if I were to press E on my keyboard, I can then zoom in within the editor. If I press W, we can zoom out. We can also use the ruler for this. So if I click, hold, and drag down, then we zoom in. If I drag up, then we zoom out. We also have this slider here in the bottom right corner that's gonna accomplish the same thing here, zooming in and out. And if we come over to this uh, display area to the left of our waveform and I click, hold, and drag up, then we can zoom in vertically on our waveform. And if you notice that after I've made those uh, zoom adjustments, this icon here turns orange, letting you know that the waveform has been adjusted vertically. And we can click, hold, and drag up or down to adjust here as well vertically. And if I move this back down to the very bottom, you see that that orange highlight goes away and our waveform is back to its default display. Next in the upper left hand corner here, we have an area where we can click and then open up our color palette where we can choose a different track color, which is going to affect our track and the audio events within that track. I'll go ahead back to that default color. Next to that, we have an area where we can choose from our different audio tracks within the arrange view. So if I select this here, this is that audio loop that I mentioned at the beginning that I brought in. And so we'll just come back up to that uh, song here. Below that, we have access to mute, solo, and a channel mode here where we can change between stereo and mono. At the very top area, we have a selection of tools that we can choose from. And again, we're not gonna to spend too much time with these, just a brief overview with each one. Um, I recently put up a tutorial that covers in depth all of the tools that are available as they related to the arrange view, but this, these are gonna be redundant in how they function within the editor for the most part here. So there should be a link about there if you wanna learn more about these tools in depth. 
But just know, um, if you are new to Studio One, that we can access all of these by using our number keys. So number one is going to give us the smart arrow tool. Number two is the uh, range tool. Number three, our split tool. Four, the eraser tool. Five, the paint tool. Six, our mute tool. Seven, the bend tool. And eight is our listen tool. So let's come back to one and start with the arrow tool. And this is going to be in a smart arrow mode so that if we're in the upper portion of our audio event here in the editor then we have the range tool and we can select that select a range and even delete that out i'll control z now if we move below the center line here then we're going to have the arrow tool and i can click hold and make an adjustment to the position of our audio event and if you notice up above in our range view that uh adjust to correspond with what we've done below and i'll control z and actually deleted that out somehow. So I'll control Z again and bring that back. Now, if you want the arrow tool to be available wherever you are within your audio event and editor, then just go ahead and deselect this icon here. And then now, no matter where you are, you'll have the uh, arrow tool available to you. I'm going to go ahead and reactivate that though. Next, we have the range tool and we've already seen how that functions. Then we have the split tool. And we can use this to split up our audio events. If I were to come to the ruler and drag down and really zoom in here, we can make very precise cuts, keeping in mind that if we have snap to grid turned on here, that will have an effect on your uh, split tool. As you can see, it's kind of snapping there to my quantize value, which is quarter notes at the moment. So, but we can just come in, zoom in and make cuts any anywhere that we need to to our audio event i'll choose the arrow tool and then we can come in and select these individually like so i'm just going to control z to get rid of those cuts now number four is our erase tool and that's just going to erase if if i still had those individual events sliced up then we could come in and erase individual ones of those if i click this right now then of course it's going to delete the whole event i'll control z Number five, we have the paint tool, and this is gonna have very limited function within the editor. And basically what we can do is just draw in empty audio events. And when we do this, it's actually going to silence the audio event. This sits on top of our audio event. So if I were to play back, we're gonna have silence. And then after it's gone, our audio returns. Now, if I come back to the arrow tool and try to select this, um, we actually can't delete that out from within the editor. So we'd need to come up top here and I'll zoom in a bit and select that empty event and delete it from within the editor up above. Now next we have the mute tool, which we can access by pressing six on our keyboard. And if I click, then this is going to mute our whole audio event. Um, really the mute tool could be useful if you have, if you were to use the split tool and, and create separate audio events that you'd like to silence, then you can use the mute tool to do that. Number seven, we have the bend tool. And if I click and drag down and zoom in a bit, we can use this to add bend markers to our uh, audio event here. I am actually adding these. And in order to see those bin markers, we would want to open up our bin panel by clicking this icon here. Then we can just click on this little eye icon. And now we can see those bin markers that I've added. If we'd like to remove any markers, we can just double click and click to add by dragging left or right you want to be sure that that icon, if you notice here, changes once we are, once we float over a bin marker, that's going to change. And once it does that, we can drag left or right to stretch and compress our audio. So if I control Z and um, zoom out a bit, let's play back and hear how this sounds now. Now, if I were to come in and stretch this out. Let's then listen to that again. Okay, so you can hear how that was stretched 
And just know that if I come back over here, whenever we have audio that's being stretched, it's going to turn red. And the more it's stretched, the deeper this color red is going to be. Audio that we uh, that is being compressed is going to turn green. And uh, of course, as with the red, the deeper the green, the more it's being compressed. And something else that's important to take into consideration is that if I I'll F2 and close off the editor for a moment and F4 and open up the inspector. If we're going to perform these any stretching or compression with the bend tool, you want to be sure that your time stretch mode is set to appropriately for the material that you're working with. We're working with a song right now, so that's we'd really want to use this polyphonic mode and not drums. There are drums in the song, but we've also got polyphonic sound, so we'd want to choose that polyphonic. If you're working with, say, a vocal, then you'd want to choose this solo. Um, and actually, since we're using bend markers, you'd really want to use the audio bend. So that's what you'd really want to use uh, if you're going to go ahead and add the bend markers and create uh, adjustments using that tool. So I'll F4 close out the inspector. Let's bring back our editor. I'm going to control Z to get rid of our markers. Let's zoom out a bit. And the last tool that we have is the listen tool. And we can access that by pressing eight. And basically wherever we click within our audio event, in our editor, it will start playback. And all of the other tracks within your song will be muted when you do this. So as long as you hold down, then it's just gonna play back. So we can come to anywhere within our event and start playback. Okay, um, so let's come back to the arrow tool. I'll press one, and we already have the audio bend panel open. So there's also a complete tutorial on every feature within the bend panel. So just look out for the link there. Next, we have a strip silence panel. We have our quantize panel and a panel for working with macros. Now, I'm going to close that out. We next have a drop down menu for different actions that we can perform to our audio event. And I want to show that if we were to select our audio event up in the uh, arrange view here and I were to right click on it and come to our audio operations down at the bottom and just float the cursor there. Take note of this menu here because this is basically an exact duplication of what we have in our uh, arrange view. If you notice these titles, audio processing, volume, envelope, audio bend, audio parts. Now if I close out of there and come back to our event below here in the editor, come to the action menu, click, we have audio processing, and so on. These same titles, these same functions that are available when we right click in the song above. So we can normalize our audio, reverse, strip silence, edit with Melodyne, remove our Melodyne, and this just goes on. We could even send this to a new sample one if we wanted to work with it in a sampler. Next to that we have our quantize, time base, and snap settings. So the quantize is uh, whatever we have set here, this is going to affect our quantize function. So if we were to quantize audio, then what we have set here is going to be made use of. Our time base, basically we're in bars, so our ruler is going to display in bars. We have a few other different options though. We can cho choose seconds, and you can see how that updates. We can also choose samples or frames. And I'll just come back to our bars. Next then we have our snap settings. And you do need to be sure that your snap to grid is turned on here, and mine is. So we can just press N on our keyboard to make that active. And right now it's set to adaptive and the quantize is set to quarter notes. So if I were to, 
I'll press three and bring up the split tool. Now with the split tool active, if you can see this, it is kind of snapping here. And it looks like it is snapping to quarter. Let me zoom in a bit here. And then you can see how that kind of jumps and snaps to our quarter notes because that's what we have set in our quantize. But when you have adaptive set, if I were to zoom out, then in, in this instance, you can see that it's pretty much snapping by bar here because we zoomed out so far. And that's what that adaptive uh, setting is. So if I were to come in and change this to quantize, then it's going to really force it to make use of this quarter note snap setting. So it's hard to tell because we're zoomed out so far, but now it's back to that quarter note snap function. So just know that if the snap is behaving a little bit differently and, and not like you're expecting, that's because this uh, adaptive is probably turned on. And if we were to set this to bar, then it's always going to jump by bar, no matter what you have the quantized value set to. And I'll just go ahead and put this back to adaptive. We also have frames that we can choose. And then let's zoom in a bit. And we've already taken a look at the snap to grid, which we can turn on and off by pressing in. So if we turn that off, then we can just move about freely and slice wherever we'd like. I'll control Z. And then last we have auto scroll. Now with auto scroll, we can activate and deactivate by pressing F on our keyboard. And what this does is basically if you're performing edits and you're playing back, this edit screen is going to jump or move forward and follow our cursor as it plays back within our song. If we have it deactivated, then we're going to remain in the, the current area where we're editing. So if uh, right now, if I were to, I'll go ahead and activate it by pressing F and play back. And somehow they got turned back off. So now you can see I, when I turned it back on, we jumped. And our editor view is going to continue to follow our song cursor. Now, if I press F and deactivate it, then we're going to remain where we are. And this is uh, really important to pay attention to. Uh, because this can really drive you crazy if you're not aware, if you're really beginning with Studio One and you're not aware um, of what this does and you're trying to perform edits and it keeps changing on you, that's what you need to pay attention to is the auto scroll. Okay, and so I think we've covered everything here for the audio editor. And uh, in the second part of using the editor, we're going to cover the music editor, which is, as we talked about at the beginning of the video, working with MIDI parts. And so I hope that uh, you found something useful in this video and thank you for watching.